Hello and welcome. My name is Ian Fletcher. I am the Senior Product Manager for Temperature Resistant Coatings and I shall be giving this presentation on UPC, a solution approach for CUI in new construction. In this presentation, I will give an introduction to CUI, its causes and implications. I will then go on to highlight the challenges faced in new construction projects that are a direct result of how temperature resistance is addressed and how these challenges can be overcome by using the UPC product offer from Axel Nobel. You may be asking yourself, what is UPC? UPC stands for Universal Pipe Coating and is Axel Nobel's answer to the issues faced on new construction projects that use traditional coating specifications. It is fair to say that the oil and gas industry has changed dramatically over the last 10 years. Facility owners are more than ever looking to reduce shutdowns, improve plant efficiency and extend plant lifetimes. With this comes the increased industry understanding about CUI and its impact and the ongoing desire for pragmatic high performance and cost effective coating solutions. So what actually is CUI? Corrosion under insulation, CUI, occurs due to water ingress through an insulation system, creating a highly corrosive environment against the underlying steelwork. And CUI's corrosion rate can be up to 20 times faster than atmospheric corrosion, resulting in steel loss of between 0.5 and 3 millimeters per year. As shown before, Corrosion of the substrate is difficult to identify without the removal of the insulation and can therefore go unrecognized for significant periods of time. As a consequence, there is considerable degradation of steel piping and vessels with the potential for catastrophic failure. As you can see in this schematic of an insulated pipe, water easily enters damaged cladding. Over time, the water starts to accumulate towards the bottom of the pipe. The hot pipe heats the water and dissolved salts start to accumulate on the pipe surface. The aggressive environment accelerates the corrosion process, which if left unchecked, will lead to catastrophic failure. CUI typically occurs between around minus 4 degrees Celsius and 175 degrees Celsius and is at its most severe at around 60 degrees Celsius. It is fair to say that very little equipment experiences a constant temperature. It may undergo cyclic temperature processes and will be at ambient during pre-startup and shipping to site, during annual shutdowns and maintenance and during unplanned shutdowns and outages. So it is fair to say that all piping and equipment under insulation will enter the CUI temperature range at some point in its life. With such large areas of insulated piping, it comes as no surprise that there are many challenges during new construction projects. Oil and gas new construction projects can involve thousands of process pipe spools, valves and other associated equipment. All of them require different coating schemes depending on the surface temperature range, or if they are carbon steel or stainless steel, or if the requirement is for insulated or uninsulated applications. And with so many different specifications, here you can see that there can be five different generic types of coatings that can be required, which have to be carefully selected depending on what temperature range or insulated or uninsulated application is needed. This just adds more complexity to a job coater's already complex business. As one pipe spool coater put it, in a single month, I will use 40 different coatings from six different manufacturers. It's a nightmare. So as we have seen, having to paint so many process pipes can be a complicated business. For example, for a pipe spool job, a pipe spool blaster and painter 
needs to know how many different coatings are required, which spools need insulation and which ones do not, which ones are for cyclic service and which ones are not, and then how many different coating systems are needed. This segregation into each coating category is critical in order to avoid making mistakes and using the wrong coating system on the wrong pipe spool. This complexity can add cost for blasters and painters, resulting from the increased risk of application errors, reduced productivity, and increased paint waste and disposal costs. And of course, mistakes can be made. Bulk supplied items can arrive at the fabrication site with the incorrect coating for the final operating environment, requiring expensive on-site rework. Up to 20% of bulk supplied items can be installed with an incorrect coating system for the final operating environment, again resulting in further rework, which can cause delays and increase costs. Another issue is that, for example, process piping, vessels and valves, the so-called bulk supplied items, have long lead times and they will be ordered before the final detailed project specification has been written. This means that bulk supplied items can be ordered and a protective coating system applied before confirmation of the final operating environment has been obtained. Any on-site changes will again mean that it is likely that the applied coating system will have to be removed as it won't be suitable for any operating environment changes. And here you can see why this is the case. Traditional coatings for high temperature are only suitable for a narrow range of end uses. High build epoxies are only suitable up to 120 degrees Celsius. Epoxy phenolics are used between cryogenic temperatures and 230 degrees Celsius. Inorganic zinc silicates, although have a wide temperature range, should not be used under insulation as they can accelerate carbon steel corrosion. And aluminium silicones, which also have a wide temperature range, have poor corrosion protection in the CUI temperature zone. Specification complexity can then add unexpected costs for EPCs as during the fabrication process, equipment can be installed with an incorrect coating system for the final operating environment, which means increased rework required to correct the coating error, increased painting costs, and increased risks of schedule impact. And for owners, the coating errors resulting from specification complexity lead to the increased risk of CUI and increased maintenance and repair costs. So to summarize, the challenges at new construction of having coatings with a narrow environmental tolerance, which are used in complex specifications to cover the end uses of large amounts of bulk supplied items, results in expensive on-site rework costs and schedule impacts, and can lead to early coating failure and increased CUI risks. As a result of all of this, engineering companies need coating solutions to reduce the complexity of handling large amounts of piping and associated pipe accessories, such as valves, and coatings that provide excellent corrosion and temperature resistance across a wide range of temperatures that reduce on-site rework costs, reduce schedule impacts, and reduce the costs of coating failure. To address these industry challenges, I would now like to introduce Axonobel's Universal Pipe Coating Product Offer, the CUI solution for new construction projects. The product offer consists of two products. For process piping and equipment operating between minus 196 degrees Celsius and 650 degrees Celsius, Interbond 1202 UPC should be used. And for process piping and equipment operating between minus 196 degrees Celsius and 230 degrees Celsius, Interbond 2340 UPC can also be used.
Here you can see their respective operating temperature ranges. Depending on the project, it may make sense to just use 1202 UPC to cover the operating temperature range, or maybe just 2340 UPC is only required, or maybe a combination of both products is more suitable, where 2340 UPC is used from minus 196 degrees Celsius to 230 degrees Celsius, and then 1202 UPC is used to cover the 230 degrees Celsius to 650 degrees Celsius temperature range. In any case, both products greatly reduce the specification complexity that results from having to use traditional coating systems to cover this wide temperature range. Let's now look at Interbond 1202 UPC in more detail. Interbond 1202 UPC is a novel IMM, inert multipolymeric matrix coating, based on enhanced inorganic copolymer technology and provides corrosion and temperature resistance from minus 196 degrees Celsius to 650 degrees Celsius without the need for a heat cure or a primer. And one of the reasons why this is possible is because of 1202 UPC's excellent corrosion resistance. To highlight this point, 1202 UPC's corrosion resistance was benchmarked against other IMM coatings available on the market that all comply with the NACE SP0198 2017 CS6 coating category. All coatings were applied at 2 times 125 microns and cured at 20 degrees Celsius for a minimum of 7 days before corrosion testing started. This slide shows results from the ASTM D5894 test. The test consists of one week prohesion testing and one week cyclic UVA condensation testing. Again, 1202 UPC performed very well with only coatings two and three also performing well, whilst the other coatings tested failed either due to corrosion through the film or both high corrosion creep and coating defects. It should be noted in both of these tests that only the two pack coatings, one, two and three, performed well, whereas all one pack products performed poorly. All coatings were also put on external exposure at a North Sea coastal site in the UK, which has a highly corrosive environment, combining industrial and marine conditions. And then after 24 weeks, the performance of all four single pack coatings deteriorated further, whereas the three two pack coatings continued to perform well. The importance of corrosion protection after ambient cure should not be overlooked if installations run at ambient temperatures, if process piping and equipment is transported by sea to the erection site, or if there are several years before installation, commissioning and operation. Corrosion resistance was also looked at after heating to 205 degrees Celsius. This is important to know because it is possible that coatings can degrade at high temperatures, but this degradation only shows itself at ambient temperatures after exposure to a corrosive environment, such as during a shutdown in a refinery or petrochemical plant. This test consists of two weeks at 205 degrees Celsius, followed by two weeks of ASTM D5894 testing, which is then repeated six times. Here again, we see that 1202 UPC performs very well, as does coating two, three less so, but all single pack products perform poorly. Another test looked at heating from 400 degrees C to 650 degrees C, followed by corrosion testing. The test consisted of one cycle of the following. Two weeks at 400 degrees C with weekly peaks to 650 degrees C for 24 hours every week, then one week immersion in 40 degrees C water, followed by one week exposure to cyclic salt spray testing. Once again, 1202 UPC performed well, as did coatings 5 and 6. Coatings 3 and 7 showed cracks, and coatings 2 and 4 showed signs of rusting.
The third key element for a universal pipe coating is its ability to provide excellent protection against corrosion under insulation. The CUI Cyclic Corrosion Pipe Test, CCCPT, now known as the Houston Pipe Test, was developed by Axon Nobel in the early 2000s, when no test protocol existed to evaluate CUI under cyclic temperature environments. The test has been shown to be a very good method to screen the performance of coating technologies used to combat CUI. Intertherm 751 CSA successfully passed this test and has gone on to demonstrate more than 10 years successful in-service performance. The test is based on clamping two calcium silicate half shells around a pipe coated with the product under test. Calcium silicate was selected as the insulation material because of its ability to absorb a large amount of water and so maintain a high level of water saturation around the pipe. The pipe is then placed on a hot plate set at a temperature to provide the desired temperature gradient across the pipe. Then over a 24 hour period, the pipe undergoes the following cycle. Add one liter of water, 1% sodium chloride solution. Apply heat for eight hours to produce a thermal gradient. Then add one more liter of water and allow to cool to ambient over 16 hours. Repeat the cycle 30 times and then remove from the test and inspect the coated pipe. This test was configured to ensure coated pipes were exposed to a temperature range from 50 to 200 C, as you can see in the pipe temperature wet column in the table, and so covered off the critical CUI zone. The seven coating systems used in the previous tests shown in this presentation were then subjected to the Houston pipe test. As you can see from this test, only 1202 UPC and coatings two and three showed no coating defects whatsoever. Whereas all four of the single pack coatings showed varying degrees of corrosion, highlighting their unsuitability for CUI protection. So we have seen that 1202 UPC has excellent corrosion and temperature resistance and is ideal for CUI protection. Another key benefit of 1202 UPC is its ability to improve shop productivity. Unlike many other IMM coatings on the market, 1202 UPC does not need an inorganic zinc silicate primer to deliver corrosion protection. Not only that, but 1202 UPC has a short overcoating interval between coats. As you can see in this graphic, compared to some IMM coatings on the market, 1202 UPC can reduce coating scheme application times by as much as 18 hours, meaning productivity improvement through faster shop throughput. So to summarize, not all IMM coatings are the same. Some coatings have poor corrosion resistance at ambient temperatures. Other coatings do not provide the high heat temperature resistance they claim. Interbond 1202 UPC, which is a novel IMM, has been formulated to provide corrosion resistance at both ambient temperatures and in the CUI zone, and to provide temperature resistance from cryogenic to 650 degrees C. Interbond 1202 UPC greatly simplifies specifications which means faster shop throughput and less waste for fabricators and applicators, less on-site rework costs for EPCs, and greatly reduce CUI risks for owners and operators. Let's now turn to the second of the two UPC products, Interbond 2340 UPC. Interbond 2340 UPC is an alkylated amine epoxy technology, which is a next generation epoxy phenolic delivering corrosion and temperature resistance from minus 196 degrees C to 230 degrees C. Let's now focus on 2340 UPC's features and benefits, starting with its fast low temperature cure. 
Epoxy phenolics typically cure very slowly at temperatures below 10 degrees Celsius, and this can add heating costs to the application process, such as the use of heat lamps as shown here. Conversely, 2340 UPC can be used down to minus 5 degrees Celsius, being hard dry in 10 hours at this temperature. As you can see in the table, 2340 UPC has faster hard dry times and it has much lower overcoating times than traditional epoxy phenolics. This means that compared to traditional epoxy phenolics, interbond 2340 UPC allows process piping and equipment to be coated up to 85% faster, greatly improving shop productivity. Let's now consider over application tolerance. Again, if we look at traditional epoxy phenolics, we see that they tend to have poor over application tolerance and data sheets often state maximum scheme DFTs that must not be exceeded for fear of crack formation. Sometimes cracking is not seen after application and will only show itself once the coated steel is in operation. If this coated steel is insulated, we will never know what is happening, and so the CUI risk now becomes very high indeed. As a way to demonstrate 2340 UPC's resistance to cracking due to over application, a detailed test program was carried out by Axel Nobel. In this program, panels containing a weld are cured at ambient for seven days and then subjected to five heat cycles. One cycle consists of eight hours at the target temperature, followed by 16 hours cooling to room temperature. Panels are then assessed visually for cracking, blistering and disbondment and graded. Green, no visible defects. Orange, cracking and defects observed around weld only. Red, cracking and defects observed across the face of the panel. Here we can see the performance of a so-called average performing epoxy phenolic. Heating to 120 degrees C, we see good performance for schemes up to 2 times 175 microns. But then after that, cracks around the weld start to appear. Heating to 150 degrees C, we see a different picture. All schemes have cracked badly across the face of the panel, except for one scheme at 2 times 100 microns, where it is likely that solvent entrapment is lower and so the scheme becomes less stressed on heating when solvent is released. However, when panels are heated to 200 degrees C, again we see that all panels have cracked badly, with this time cracks being just around the weld for the 2 times 100 micron scheme. Nonetheless, all panels have cracked and so failed the test. Overall, it is fair to say that this epoxy phenolic is very sensitive to over application, and other than a narrow application thickness, for optimum performance, it cracks badly in this test. Now, if we look at a so-called well-formulated epoxy phenolic, heating to 120 degrees C, we see good performance for all schemes. Heating to 150 degrees C, we see good performance up to 2 times 150 microns, but then cracks start to appear around the weld for higher DFT schemes. Now if the panels are heated to 200 degrees C, we see a mixed picture. Initially, there is cracking around the weld, but then we see good performance for two schemes, again likely because of lower solvent entrapment in each coat. But then cracking around the weld is seen for higher DFTs, with the 2 times 250 micron scheme cracking badly. This epoxy phenolic has a slightly wider application thickness for optimum performance compared to the average performing epoxy phenolic, but as thicknesses and temperature are increased, we generally see cracking around the weld. This is 2340 UPC's performance in the same tests. Here you can see for all test temperatures and DFTs, there is no cracking whatsoever anywhere on the panels. Interbond 2340 UPC shows excellent tolerance to over application.
Another important consideration when comparing epoxy phenolics is heat resistance. In this study, 2340 UPC was compared against six other traditional epoxy phenolics currently in the market. All of them are typically specified for service up to at least 200 degrees C. All schemes were applied at 2 times 125 microns and all cured at 20 degrees C for a minimum of seven days before testing. After six months exposure to 205 degrees C, we see differences in performance. One coating showed significant cracking after just six weeks, another significant cracking after 12 weeks, and one some minor cracking after three weeks. 2340 UPC and three other coatings performed excellently. Let's now review 2340 UPC's enhanced corrosion protection feature. In this study, 2340 UPC was compared against the same six other traditional epoxy phenolics currently in the market. As before, all schemes were applied at 2 times 125 microns and all cured at 20 degrees C for a minimum of seven days before testing. All panels were exposed to 25 cycles of the ISO 12994 Part 9 2018 test standard as used to qualify coating schemes for offshore CX environments. As you can see, only 2340 UPC performed well in terms of rust creep from the scribe and no corrosion spots. One coating system showed particularly bad corrosion across the face of the panel. Several coating schemes had greater than 8 mm corrosion creep and two were close to 8 mm. OK, let's now look at corrosion under insulation. The Houston pipe test, as described previously, was configured to test the coatings up to approximately 400 degrees C to clearly show the point of failure. Here you can see the results from the two pipe tests. On the right is a traditional epoxy phenolic and on the left 2340 UPC. The results show that both products show very good performance up to around 240 degrees C and so are suitable for CUI protection. 2340 UPC has a slightly higher temperature tolerance, which is particularly useful for temperature spikes experienced during steam outs. Another key benefit of 2340 UPC is erosion resistance. Often, process piping can be delivered to the erection site and sit around for a considerable time before installation. Epoxy phenolics are often specified without a durable top coat or insulation. And so there are examples seen in the field where the epoxy phenolic has been eroded, which can lead to poor anti-corrosion protection in service. Here you can see the grey top coat has eroded to reveal the red first coat. A new test was designed to simulate two years exposure to erosive conditions in an extreme climate which constantly cycles between high UV and heavy rainfall. Coatings were evaluated for DFT loss after exposure to accelerated weathering. The exposure cycle was seven days, six days QUVA water spray, followed by one day of condensation exposure. This was repeated 35 times. Here you can see in the left photo an example of a panel after the test. The amount of coating erosion correlates well with what is seen in the field. In this chart you can see the difference in the erosion rates between epoxy phenolics and 2340 UPC. After 35 weeks of accelerated testing the epoxy phenolics have lost between 80 to 100 microns of DFT whereas 2340 UPC has lost less than 40 microns, showing it to be far more resistant to environmental erosion. So to summarize, not all traditional epoxy phenolic coatings are the same. 
Some coatings have poor corrosion resistance at ambient temperatures. Other coatings do not provide the high heat temperature resistance they claim. Interbond 2340 UPC, a next generation epoxy phenolic, has been formulated to provide excellent corrosion resistance at both ambient temperatures and in the CUI zone, to provide temperature resistance from cryogenic to 230 degrees C temperatures, provide low temperature cure down to minus 5 degrees C and have excellent crack resistance at high DFTs. Interbond 2340 UPC greatly simplifies specifications, which means faster shop throughput and less waste for fabricators and applicators, less rework costs for fabricators and EPCs, and greatly reduce CUI risks for owners and operators. Twenty three forty UPC together with twelve oh two UPC together make an ideal CUI solution for new construction projects. And as this graphic shows, they can greatly reduce specification complexity and all the costs that this brings. Thank you for listening to this presentation.